What is up, everybody? Greetings, friends. Welcome to the show. We're yes. excited you're here. Episode two. Yes. Now, here's mm -hmm. one thing I don't know about okay. is when we played the video last time and we mm -hmm. came in, the audio was not synced with the video. Okay. So okay. just to double check, I'm going to refresh my page. Hold on for one second. It's going to be like five seconds of dead time, maybe. We'll see what happens. Yeah. To broadcast Interesting. show it all right so we're back hopefully uh okay peter drew you're our favorite also yes all right yo glad you guys are here super excited Hooray! okay hopefully if the audio wasn't working before it's right. working now yes. this is officially mm -hmm. episode two yes. of stuff you can use live that's right and it's like a new experiment we're we're kind of trying out as you can tell we're kind of like figuring out some of the technology still um, but we're doing these live Facebook videos every week uh, in our Facebook group uh, to just kind of like have a conversation about things that you guys are already wanting to talk about so we're taking questions from the group and kind of highlighting those topics bringing in some guests which are you and just having a conversation yes okay so you can be a guest there's yes. actually a link mm -hmm. in this post yep. if you click that link you can come on live and mm -hmm. we're talking about volunteer training today yes and so right now there's nobody in the lobby right. so nobody has Nobody's jumped there forward and said i want to be right. a guest on the show guys so this could be your moment <laughs> you could be facebook live famous yes we will get you on air so click the link join the lobby if you don't, that's all right. That's Elle and fine. I you can, can talk lurk. about volunteer training. Right, uh, right. We, it's just more fun if we're talking to somebody besides each other. We talk to each other all the time. So, you know, some other people would be fun to talk yes. to. Yes, I mean, well, we host a podcast where it's just us. We do. So it would be fun, and this is why yes. we're doing it, to bring you guys on right. and to talk to you guys. Uh -huh. So feel free, click the link in mm -hmm. the video, uh, in yep. the description, and you can come on live with us. But right. okay, and so, even if you didn't do like your hair today, that's okay. Like that's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, says cool. L, who spends like an hour I doing her hair before hour. we come on. But amazing. All right. So um, <laughs> the way this is gonna work is we're thinking maybe every week. I don't know. We'll test it out. We'll see if Tuesdays are a good day or if there's a better day. Maybe mm -hmm. Thursdays. I don't know. Sunday. Who knows? Who knows? Sunday nights might be better. But there's football on, so I probably would rather do that. Yeah. But um, so we're going to try this out and see how it goes. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys enjoy it, if it's something fun, it's fun for us because we get it to is. come into the group and say hi to everybody and uh, talk about the things that you guys are talking about during mm -hmm. the week in your Facebook discussions. Yes. And so uh, amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We don't even have our headphones today. So we will oh, yeah. we'll want to connect those. That's we probably will. important. Okay. But um, so, Elle, we're talking hey. about volunteer training. That's right. Why don't you kind of... Uh, preface it, give us okay. some ideas. What are some of the things that we should be talking mm -hmm. about today? Yeah. So Robert Smith, uh, I don't know if you're watching friends, but um, he started a conversation about this earlier uh, in the past week. And he was just asking like, hey, what are some ways that you can train volunteers, both new volunteers and kind of old volunteers who just need some ongoing training? Uh, so like, what are you doing for that? Do you have a handbook? Do you have like documents? What does that look like? Um, and so this is something that I care a lot about. Um, but we would love to hear what you guys are doing as well. So again, you can click that link that's in the post of this video if you want to join live uh, and we can kind of hear from you. Uh, but yeah, so for at least I'll tell you a little bit about kind of how we did it. You do it. Oh. I'm going to go grab the headphones because okay. we didn't even grab them. So all right, do it. Talk okay. to the people. Okay. Okay. Great. Awesome. Um, okay. So uh, a few of the things that we personally would do to train volunteers is first of all, we developed a volunteer handbook uh, and this really became like the core of what we did uh, in terms of volunteer training. So uh, we created this handbook. It had things like our ministry philosophy, our ministry strategy, uh, not just for like the youth ministry, but for the church as a whole, uh, because we really felt like we wanted um, our volunteers to really understand the bigger picture, not just the middle school or high school ministries uh, philosophy. So that was a big part of it. Um, we had expectations, we had qualifications in there. Uh, and we also had like um, some of our just core ideas, like, hey, we really want you to partner with parents. And um, hey, we really value small groups. So here's what that looks like in our ministry. So uh, that volunteer handbook became a really good kind of foundation and touch point for us that we could give to every new volunteer as soon as they signed up to serve with us. Uh, and it was also something that we refreshed every single year. So we would update it 
um, and then kind of use that as like the foundation of our kickoff event to train uh, not only new volunteers, but volunteers who are back for like another year of ministry. So that was huge for us. Um, the volunteer handbook was like a really, really big deal and something that, you know, was just really important to us. So that was huge. Um, in terms of kind of ongoing training, uh, what we would do is we did a number of volunteer meetings throughout the year. Uh, typically, I think we found that like three meetings was really our sweet spot. Uh, and if you are uh, a Grow subscriber, you'll see that that is reflected in kind of the Grow uh, strategy because we did it. We loved it. It worked really well. And so those three volunteer meetings that we would do would just be on a, a few different like felt need topics. Uh, I think one really popular one that we did that people loved uh, was we did a whole meeting about like the teenage brain and how the brain was developing uh, and then what that meant for ministry and for discipleship uh, and even things like uh, like doubt, like how the brain was impacting a kid's faith. Uh, so that was huge. Um, what else did we do, Kenny? So did Can you, you did you tell them about when you came on board? And no, I didn't tell do? them. Okay. I didn't want to bad mouth you while you were yeah. out of the room. So, okay, just to give you a little bit of our story. I kind of came on as the middle school pastor um, a long time ago, 10 years ago, probably not more than that. And for a while, I was just doing it on my own. So like I had like a part time assistant who was amazing, but just part time for me and also part time for uh, the high school ministry. I was just focused on middle school and we had a bunch of volunteers. We had like 60 mm -hmm. volunteers in our ministry, 70 volunteers. And so I had to, I was like working on the programming, working on the band and the game and like trying to get everything set up every week and like thinking about events. And like, I was dumb and I let <laughs> volunteers basically fall off my priority list. So I like was spending so much time getting ready for our weekly programming and I was spending almost zero time investing into our volunteers. And so um, it just wasn't going well. And so then finally we brought Elle on our team in the middle school department and her job was to like invest and to pour into and to make sure that our small groups and our volunteers were doing amazing. And so basically we had a summer, like the summer before you came on or like right as you were coming mm -hmm. on, we were like, okay, we want to like revamp our entire training st systems and strategies. And so we need to meet with every single volunteer face to face. And so we had like, 65 or 70 volunteers that we mm -hmm. had to set up meetings with over the right. course of three months during the summer to get ready for the new school year. So do you want to kind of talk about what we did for those and like how we yeah. kind of like retrained and like kind of <laughs> casted new vision to all of our volunteers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first thing we did was put together that volunteer handbook that I talked about. Uh, and so we would put them in these little like half size binders. And so when we would go meet with a volunteer, we would give them a binder that had uh, their handbook in it. It had like some different, um, you know, different pieces of paper in there too, things to like track their students' information, just any helpful tools we could think of. Uh, but we sat down with them, gave them their binder, and then we literally walked through the entire handbook like with them in person. Uh, we didn't necessarily read it all word for word, but we touched on the really important stuff um, and just kind of walked them through it. And as we walked through it, we would ask them like, hey, so what do you think about this like idea that we just presented? Um, does this sound good to you? Like, have you tried this already? Um, is this a struggle for you? What does this look like? Uh, and so that allowed us to get some like real time feedback. Um, first of all, not even um, a, a big part of it was if they even agreed with our ministry philosophy, because that was huge. Uh, we had a couple that we found out were like, ooh, uh, I don't know if they really agree with what we're trying to do here. So that could be a problem. Uh, we have to keep our eyes on that. Uh, but then the other thing too is just finding out like, do you, are you being successful in what you're doing? Do you feel successful? Um, what can we do to better empower and equip you? Uh, so there were a few different like dimensions of why that was really important. Yes. Um, well, and here's what you could do yeah. in the comments. If you have a volunteer handbook that you've created for your ministry, please feel free to share it. Um, we love when you guys in the group are like sharing resources that you've created with each other and like helping each other out. That's like one of my favorite mm -hmm. things about the Facebook group yes. is just how much like help back and forth there is. Mm -hmm. um, and also if you're looking for one that is editable and that you could use in your ministry, you could go to stuffyoucanuse.org. We have a volunteer handbook and also inside of Grow Curriculum. Uh, if you go to growcurriculum.org, there's a volunteer handbook inside of there mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. A couple questions that are coming through. By the way, we have somebody who just texted me. They're trying to log on, but it keeps kicking them off. So they're struggling. That's Interesting. Peter. Peter is trying to. Well, in this software. Okay. So I'm in a Facebook group for the software. It's called BeLive.tv. Mm -hmm. And 
they're kind of a startup. It's kind of a new thing, like uh -huh. this ability to be able to bring people on. And you see, like, we've got these cool, we can, like, put these little things up. Right, the so, fancy overlays and yeah, everything. Yeah, so let me, uh, I should probably put this one up now. Okay. The uh, volunteer training. Oh, yeah, Episode look at that. Episode two, volunteer training. So it's it. a really cool platform. Right. It's called BeLive.TV. You should check it out if you mm -hmm. want to do Facebook Lives for your group or yep. for you know if you right like our friend Corey um is just experimenting now with like this weekly devotional that he's doing with his students he's doing it on instagram live um but i mean there's a lot of ways you could yeah use this and so but anyway i'm in their facebook group mm -hmm. and they do have a lot of like early startup issues like hey i always go in live and no one could hear me <laughs> or hey no one was seeing my screen or Sad. my people kept getting kicked off so That's maybe okay. this is the episode where people are trying to be guests but Who then knows? they keep getting kicked Who off knows? We believe in startups, even if they're glitchy. <laughs> yeah. um, but we do have a couple questions that we I just want to address. So yeah. first of all, Sam. Sam's wondering, so do you keep children and youth uh, ministry training separate? Uh, in our context, we did. Um, I think a big part of that has to do with maybe like your size, like how many volunteers you have um, and kind of who's overseeing those ministries. But we did keep those separate um, in large part just because of uh, the size of the ministries we were working with. Well, um, and actually mm -hmm. our church has started since we've yes. left because we've been gone for the last three years. And mm -hmm. since we left, they started doing this thing where they would bring everybody together mm -hmm. and then do breakouts. Yeah. So it would be like a large group training and then they have breakout mm -hmm. rooms. I think it was ministry specific. Yeah. But I think it could they did be that like as like a mid-year kind of thing. So I think the way that they did it was every individual ministry did their own kickoff event for training volunteers. But then mid-year, they did this like big summit. So their lead pastor came in. He did some training for everybody. And but then, yeah, they split off into their uh, individual ministry. So, yeah, which, be creative. Yeah. Figure out what you think would be fun mm -hmm. and what would like add momentum and energy to your ministry. Yeah. And if you think bringing everyone together, even if it's just one time, like, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to try this out. We're going to bring all of the family ministries from like birth through graduation under the same uh, training events because mm -hmm. maybe there's some good stuff to talk about because it actually would be a good idea to reinforce those relationships between ministries and even yeah. the volunteers between those ministries. Um, mm -hmm. That's always a good thing. So it might not be good to do it every single time, sure. but to do that once a year or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, wants to try it, that right. could be fun. Uh, and Chris, Chris is saying that um, he's struggling figuring out the best time and place to do their meetings uh, because probably like all of us, are, his volunteers are kind of feeling like, shoot, like I really don't want to go. Like how long is this going to take? Uh, we have definitely been there and it took us a little bit uh, to figure out the best rhythm uh, for us and for our ministry. What ended up working for us really well uh, was we did Sunday morning programming for our middle school ministry. And so what we would do uh, is our, you know, our volunteers would show up to serve on a Sunday, but then as soon as the final service let out, we would flip the room and get it ready for a meeting. Uh, and that's actually what our current church does as well when, when we do meetings um, that works really well. And so we would serve lunch and we would do prizes and we would do giveaways and have like some fun games and stuff. Uh, but we would always keep it to like an hour max. So in an hour, we would pack a ton of stuff. We would do the giveaways and the games, like usually one quick upfront game. Uh, and then we would roll into the training really fast. So a way that we that uh, we kind of figured out how to do this is number one, give them food. They want food. Uh, number two, do it at a time when they're already there. So they don't need to make another trip. Um, then, so like before or after yeah. your program. So like right. obviously you wouldn't want to do it during church right. necessarily. <laughs> but if you have YouTube on Wednesday night, maybe mm -hmm. you can ask them to stick around for an extra hour or depending on when you start to show up an hour early. Yeah. Um, for us, it was easy because we did our middle school ministry program on Sunday mornings. Mm -hmm. So we were just like, hey, stick around for lunch. We're going to buy yeah. you tacos or pizza right. or salads well, or whatever you want. Just a, here's just a random thought. We actually purposely pretty much never did pizza because we were like, we did it a couple times out of desperation, but we tried to During make those. During football season. Oh, I mean, yeah, that might have been to, what it was. That's like a Buffalo staple. It is a Buffalo and probably staple. everywhere, but yeah. definitely in Buffalo. Yeah. If you go over anybody's house, there's a party pizza that's waiting. True. Right. But that's true. But it's kind of our philosophy just in general for those lunches was, hey, let's feed our volunteers something that we don't typically already like give out at student events. Like, let's make this feel a little bit special. So we would do like some food and desserts that just kind of felt a little bit 
more upscale than something we would serve a middle schooler. If you guys have a Wegmans near you, oh, we would Wegmans. do Wegmans subs. Uh, if you don't know about Wegmans, you're missing out. The best grocery store on the planet. Like Whole Foods is nothing compared to nothing. Wegmans, but we would cater from Wegmans and yes. bring stuff in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I put my headphones on because right. I saw some Somebody people. Somebody was in the lobby. And I mean, they got there's been multiple people coming into the lobby and then they're getting kicked out. So I sorry, apologize friends. for that. It's the show thing. is way more fun when we get to actually talk to youth <laughs> pastors. It is. Um, a couple other things I would say to Chris too, though, as you're trying to figure out like the best time and place to do these, uh, is make sure it's worth their time. Uh, one thing that uh, we've talked a lot about, um, I, I actually got to help write a book called Creating a Lead Small Culture a few years ago. And uh, there's something that we put in there that was all about uh, volunteer meetings and how to make them really successful. And so we kind of came up with this formula that is every volunteer meeting should have three things. It should be one third connection, one third information, and one third inspiration. Uh, and so sometimes like depending on your leadership style, you might lean toward one of those things over the others. Like for me, I love the information part. Like I would love to sit there and just like talk through a book or something with my volunteers, but I know it's not everybody's style. Uh, some people show up and they just really want to like get inspired because they're feeling tired. Uh, and then other people just want to show up and like hang out with their fellow volunteers. And so the best volunteer meetings combine all three of those things in like equal measure because then you're hitting everybody's different styles. Uh, and that will kind of help um, make everybody feel like, oh, I couldn't have um, you know gotten this in any other way. Like sometimes I've gone to meetings before where I sat there and I'm like, okay, I just gave you an hour of my time. You could have just sent this to me in an email and that would have been like a better use of my time. Don't do meetings like that, guys. They're kind of lame. Um, well, and you know it's fun for yeah. meetings. Similar to like how we're trying to do this right now with mm -hmm. bringing youth pastors on to like talk about their ideas. We would find volunteers who are doing really well and bring mm -hmm. them up to share with all the other volunteers during a meeting. So mm -hmm. we might have a meeting and uh, we had this one girl. She was so cool. She mm -hmm. was awesome. And yep. she was like a college student and on a budget. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're asking her to do like, hey, hang out with your small group and do like a small group party or like yeah. do something fun during church. And during she had time. like 25 kids in her small group. Yeah. So doing a party with like on a college kids budget was difficult. And so she she was awesome. She'd go to the mm -hmm. dollar store and like figure out how to get the most bang for her buck. And yeah. we would reimburse like we actually had a policy where if you were a volunteer, we would reimburse you up to $25 for a small group party. And so she was like, okay, I have $25. Right. I'm going to get the mm -hmm. most out of this. And so she was amazing. And then so we're like, hey, would you be willing to share your tips and techniques yeah. at, an, at the right. next volunteer meeting? It was like a little TED talk. Yes. And so she, <laughs> she came up. She's like, okay, guys, let me tell you. <laughs> How to have the most successful small group party on uh -huh. a $25 budget. It was pretty And so awesome. she's talking about the deals and like mm -hmm. where to find certain things. Like if you want to get yeah. plates, like here's where you buy them. I don't know. She was like, <laughs> plates will, will provide, but whatever. Like she just had like the best ideas and like yes. fun things. And so. Yeah, that was like the most boring example you could possibly Yeah, if you want plates, here's, here's how where to, to get buy the them. cheap plates. She had better ideas she than did. just plates. She did. But okay, here's what I want to try. Okay. Because since people are getting kicked right. off, I want to refresh my page again. <gasps> it's going to. I'm put scared. us down for a minute so uh just hang with me i'm we gonna need, refresh we need some background music for this this is well facebook will okay we are back we're back um so if you were trying to get on and uh you weren't able to uh, like Peter or Chris or any of the people that tried mm -hmm. to come in and click the link. Try it again. Maybe it'll work. I yeah. don't know if that fixed it. Was Chris it. the person in the green shirt? I saw, uh, I saw yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. It was a, it was a different Chris. Oh, Gerald. Oh. Gerald's in the room. Gerald? Gerald? Click on the link. Gerald, get in here. I want to talk to Gerald. Um, I want to talk to everybody, but oh my try again. Click the link. Maybe you can get on the show. Right. The software is being we'll a little see. glitchy today. If we see you, we'll let you in. But, yeah. you know, who knows? <laughs> um, okay. So we've talked about some meetings. We talked about volunteer handbook. Um, Let's talk about else? our rhythm for a minute. Okay. So, um, like El said, we did like three meetings a year, but mm -hmm. really, like every other month, yep. we tried to do some kind of meeting or mm -hmm. party just for getting our everybody volunteers. together. Yeah, get everyone together every other month. So let's just kind of like show you what that looks mm -hmm. like over the span of a year. Like starting yeah. in the fall, we would obviously do like a kickoff event meeting mm -hmm. that was like, hey, volunteers, we're going to vision cast for the entire year. Um, and then that'd be like an hour, an hour and a half after church. Like we said, it would be like, you know, 
they were already there. Give mm -hmm. them some food, make it nice and fun and fast, like not take up their whole day. Right. Um, and then the next month, nothing on the calendar for them. They just come in and they serve and they do their thing. But then the month after that, we ask them to come back for lunch. Yeah. And so we kind of did that every other month, mm -hmm. um, either gave them lunch and did a training or maybe it was like in December. So we did a Christmas party mm -hmm. or it was like the end of the school year. So we did an end of the school year party. We loved having parties with right. our volunteers because yes. really they need connection just mm -hmm. as much as they need training. Like they want to feel a part of what you're doing. They want to feel a part of the ministry and like supported and uh, appreciated. So as much as we could like, give them <clears throat> parties and like appreciation. That was uh, mm -hmm. what we tried to do. And then, yeah. so in those off months, so every other month we did a big meeting where everybody came together. Um, and then those off months, we just found little pockets of volunteers and had like discussions with them. Mm -hmm. So we would say like, hey, uh, seventh grade small group leaders, or hey, maybe for you it's like girls leaders or guys leaders, whatever mm -hmm. you might want to find. Yeah, for um, your worship band. And something. we would like take them out to coffee, mm -hmm. get them dessert. Like we would usually go on like a weeknight when they were available. So it might be like Thursday night. And we say like, hey, girls small group leaders, um, do you want to meet us up at this dessert place on Thursday night? We'll get you coffee and we'll just talk about how your small groups are going mm -hmm. or how your experience is serving in our ministry. So we try to do big ones every other month and then like small intimate ones mm -hmm. uh, like off campus somewhere we can just hang out buy them coffee and dessert and just like yeah. build those relationships and really give them an opportunity to give us feedback and to like help each other so like if mm -hmm. they had a question like i just can't get my kids to talk in my group then another leader who's sitting around the table eating dessert is like well here's what i tried and it really worked for me and so we saw a lot of that and it was just a really cool like mm -hmm. it was a, it was a good rhythm it I was felt like, it was a good rhythm because it kept our volunteers calendars like not filled up, mm -hmm. but it gave us a chance to connect with them often enough yeah. where they felt like they had a voice mm -hmm. and uh, we got to hear from them, which was really important. And so right. it was just really good. Um, I want to say something about like mandatory attendance when it comes to meetings, because uh, a lot of times it's like, well, I, I only got like what? 50% of my volunteers there or 75% of my volunteers, is it really worth it? And how do I get everybody to show up? Um, so our philosophy on that is uh, really the only mandatory uh, training event that we did was the kickoff in the beginning of every year. Uh, because, you know, obviously that's the beginning of the school year. It's really important to start off on the right foot. And so we would give them that date like months and months in advance and be like, this is the one thing you absolutely have to come to. Uh, now, Occasionally, we would have somebody who literally couldn't. They were out of town, whatever. Um, we would, you know, kind of like one on one be like, hey, it's fine. We'll catch you up later. But publicly, our everything we said was this is mandatory. You have to be there. Um, so that's the only one, though, that uh, was actually mandatory. The others were strongly suggested. And we tried to make it like really fun so they wanted to come. But we didn't make them feel bad. If well, they and that's the it. thing. Like, you should try. Oh, we got Gerald on the line here. Gerald, give us a minute. Let me just wrap this up. Kay. So we would we would try to make our volunteer meetings. Uh, like really fun and like we mm -hmm. want them to be there so the more you could do that like think of some fun games you can yeah. play or some food you can buy or something to make it so they're mm -hmm. not dreading it but but you can also to just make it easy if somebody does miss to catch up on the information that they missed so we would just make like a pdf of our notes that we would email out afterwards just to make it simple all right let's bring gerald <gasps> on gerald, gerald guys cross your fingers let's hope seconds. this works gerald all right yeah. How you doing? I'm in the show. Can I hear you? No, wait. Oh, no. Hold on. Hold on. Gerald, you got a microphone or something? <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm on a MacBook, bro. I don't know. And, guys, if you're watching, let can us know. Can you guys hear, you Gerald? hear Gerald? Well, it doesn't even matter because look we him. can't hear look him. him. You're right. What That's true. I mean, How are we supposed to talk? Man, this is <laughs> be live, not working. At least we got a nice like right. dance. and Right. Oh, oh shoot. Nick, Nick can hear him. him. Well, yeah, just like maybe your your things are just weird. Gerald, try again. Speak. I, I, oh, yes. Yo, okay, I, that's I, good. Let's okay. see. Now I can hear him. Oh. Well, you so just have to put the headphones on. Yeah. I can't hear him anymore. Your maybe my are buds are broken. Your buds are broken. All right, Gerald, we're going to try to go without the headphones. Hopefully, there's no feedback for the people. Right. Come on. Hi. How are you? Yo, what are you doing? Gerald, tell us about how you do volunteer training. Well, first, tell the people who you are, mm -hmm. where you're at, and uh, what you do. Yes, and your yeah, favorite no. cereal. Okay, my name's Joe Uh My favorite cereal is Apple Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It just came out. If you've never had it, you need to go get it. It's a game yeah. changer. Uh, I work at a church. 
of students. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Where at? I know you're right now. They're all here's the whole squad. They're all here. Hey guys! Oh, oh got the whole team. Team. Yeah. Love it. What's up? So Gerald uh, is actually he serves at the church that El and I volunteer That's true. at. So That's true. We're, we're we're not in his ministry though. Right. He does high school. We volunteer mm -hmm. in the middle school ministry. Yes. So he's but not our boss. This is our last. This is eighth grade. So who knows, <gasps> Gerald? Maybe next yeah. year we'll move up. To you high could school. be our boss next year. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be me, but it may be a friend of yours. We'll see. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to leak any secrets. These are like right. big secrets. These are big secrets. Out. But mm -hmm. we're talking about volunteer training today. Do you want to like drop any knowledge on us? Like tell us about your volunteer training strategy, what you guys do, how you do it? Yeah, uh, hire a really, really great team because I don't really train our volunteers. I just have yeah, <laughs> easy, easy for you to say, Gerald, most of these people in the youth, in like some you can use group, they don't have a team. Right. They're yeah. all they're all on their own, you know. It's so true. give us. It's true. You have you have the luxury of all these people sitting around. Look at the all table. those precious angels. But uh, yeah, give us some I'll general you, ideas. Give you one little tidbit that we talk about all the time. It's really not about training, it's about recruiting, and it's a okay. lot easier to train when you recruit the right people. So you don't have to train as much to recruit the right people. Yeah. So we look for uh, three characteristics: people who are healthy obviously healthy in their own life. They're growing, they're growing in their faith. They're in a small group, they're plugged in the local church. Uh, and then they have the sauce and that's just kind of like a factor. It's like, hey, can you actually hang out with a group of students and then want to actually talk to you? And so when you find people like that, the training becomes really easy because then it's all about how do you build relationships? How do you have conversations? But finding great people is the first step, I think. Mm -hmm. Yo, That's good huge. point. So how do you find the right people? Like, do you have any tips on uh, how to get the right people in the door? Because that probably is a struggle mm -hmm. for a lot of ministries. Yeah, uh, we're fortunate. Our lead pastor does a push for us every year to help us find volunteers. But one of the things that we do is uh, we call hallway hustle. And so you just walk the hallways. Hey, bro, you look cool. Let me take you to coffee and see if, you, if you're healthy, if you're growing, if you have the sauce. It doesn't work all the time, but every now and then you might get one or two people uh, who are great. And then every time we sit down with someone who is going to be a leader for us, uh, we ask them if they know someone else who could lead with them. And so we kind of put the responsibility on them to find their, uh, their own co-leaders. And so this year we were looking for, I think, 72 volunteers. Uh, and we had a list of 38 names. We said no to most of them. Uh, but because of the people that we found, we were able to find more great leaders through that. So if you have one, then you have access to probably 10 more. Wow. That's really good. And also, I just want to say that you tried to hallway hustle me. So this is true <laughs> that he literally does do this. Um, but also, I love that you are brave enough to say no to people. Uh, that's huge. And that's something that we've talked about like a lot in our ministry is being willing to say no to people who want to serve that aren't the right fit. Because at least what I've seen, maybe you have too, Gerald, is like when you have the wrong people in the room, it really impacts your volunteer culture in a negative way where you might actually be limiting your future recruitment abilities because people show up and they're like, oh, uh, I don't think I want to serve here. Like these people are not into it. Like these other volunteers, you know, they're just not feeling it because of we have the wrong no, people in the room. But I love what you're saying about the yeah. hallway hustle yes. because, you know, a lot of us as youth pastors, we like come in, we do our mm -hmm. thing, and then we're like ready to go home, like that's it. But really, if you want to recruit better volunteers, you got to get out there. You got to be active. Like you said, ask them to coffee. Be like, yo, I'd love to meet you, talk to you a little more. When can we hang out and grab coffee? Mm -hmm. And that's just like a really great idea because yeah. you got to hustle, right? Like, a, yeah. like a youth ministry is almost like a mm -hmm. startup. Right. So you got to get out there and you got to <laughs> hustle and you got to make it happen. And so. I uh, love what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But, dude, thank you so much for coming on today. This has Yay! been a lot of fun yeah. having you. Hey, hey guys, uh, today I'm trying to raise $1,000 for, for. What? <laughs> what happened? What? what just happened? This was the worst. I don't know what you're fundraising for, Gerald, but that was like the worst pitch imaginable. <laughs> All right, Gerald, you're out of here. It was great talking to you. And we actually have another person, Chris Davis. Oh my gosh, Chris, Hi, Chris. We're gonna bring you on in a minute. So hold on, give us a few seconds here and get you up on the screen. Chris Hello. Davis, tell us hey. who you are, where you're from and what you do. Hey, yeah, I'm Chris Davis. I'm from uh, South Jersey, it's called Cherry Hill. I'm working in my mobile office here today, it's in my car. Yeah, uh, I love it. Love it. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I'm a, a youth pastor, work with middle school and high school. Uh, yeah, love it. Love you guys. Oh, we oh, love, we love you. you. Amazing. I thought you were wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt for a second. 
No, I got it's excited. our ministry shirt. That's also exciting. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> so tell us about um, any, what do you want to talk about as far as training volunteers go? Do you have any tips or tricks or like how you guys, what your volunteer training strategy looks like? Yeah, I actually clicked here to be able to learn from you guys. So, um, nice. yeah, no, it really, um, just the best thing that we've been able to see growth out of is just pulling people that we have a personal relationship with. And so we don't have a big youth group here. Uh, we have about like 50, 60 students. And so we have about like 10 leaders, which I think is awesome. But yeah. each, each one that we've had to recruit has been like a personal relationship that my wife or my or myself have had and it's just like hey uh do you love students do you love the lord are you discipling somebody hey why don't you come help us and out of that um we've like just really gotten the right people and uh yeah it's been awesome that's awesome nice well yes. dude love it that sounds great like that's exactly right mm -hmm. like and like you want your volunteer team to feel like close-knit relationships and like yeah. you want to be able to create that kind of culture so mm -hmm. that's really cool to hear that that's working for you yeah. and uh it sounds like you got a great team you got 10 volunteers yeah. that are killing it yes and so uh, those are good ratios man what do Love you it. guys do as far as like yeah. meetings you do like meetings every week or every month or like what does that look like for you guys uh-oh oh. we froze i think we have some bad feedback uh, oh phone. no Sorry, Chris. I think you're Chris. breaking up on us. It was good to we have you. you. That was Chris, everybody. Yay, Thank you. Chris. Chris, thanks for joining us. That was amazing. Love getting people on yes. uh, to talk. And so amazing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Sam is saying, love God, love students. My only requirement is <laughs> to be a great youth worker. Amazing. Yeah. We we talked about that. Um, actually, when, again, we were writing Creating Elite Small Culture. We're like, so what are the requirements? And for a while, we were like, love God, love students. We did end up adding a third one, which is you have to pass a background check. So maybe maybe just like add that to your list, Sam. But otherwise, I agree. Love God, love students. Pass your background check. Yes. That's it. Amazing. So <laughs> in the comments, if you guys are watching this uh, later, feel free to leave your yes. ideas, your tips, your tricks, share any documents you have. Mm -hmm. But before we go today, okay. um, I want to give away a $50 <gasps> gift card to Amazon. Hooray! And then you guys can maybe use it for your next volunteer party yep. or your next volunteer event that you guys do. So I'm going to read a question. Okay. And uh, if there's better ideas, I was trying to think of like and do some research, like mm. fun ways to give away prizes on Facebook Live. Okay. That's but, like you Googled. So far, yeah. So far, all I've got is like doing a trivia question uh -huh. live. But if you have better ideas, let me know. But okay, here okay. it is. Uh, in the uh vein in the ideas yeah. of fun okay. and making your volunteers love what you do here's a game you could try to do okay. well here's the game it's operation ever play operation you know you like yeah. get in there, you gotta take it out maybe a life-size operation how would you build that hey, someone do it give us the instructions but here's the question so the trivia question for the day is how many parts must be removed from the patient in the game operation how many parts must be moved? Leave your answers in the comments. We will see them pop up. We will. And the first person to give us the right amount is the winner. And this is from Wits and Wagers, probably mm -hmm. like 2010. Yeah. So if they like revamped the game since mm -hmm. then, this is the 2010 version I'm like, of Operation. I'm just like a little bit stuck in my head right now about a life-size version of Operation. And like, I mean, I guess you could do it like with like an actual cadaver. But no, like, that's no, not a good no. 13. Like, We've got a winner. Whoa! It is Jason. Jason! Mayo. 13. Jason. Congrats, Jason. We're going to send yes. you a $50 gift yep. card yep. Uh, to Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then you can use that yep. in your group and training your volunteers you and whatever you want to do. And or guys, like you could buy pizza. I don't right. Care you, you could do whatever do. you want. You could just go buy yourself like I don't know, a sloth onesie or something if you feel like it. If that's Maybe that would do. help your volunteer training. It I might. don't know. So it really might. You have uh, to be creative. And guys, if you don't know Jason, you should be his friend. He's very smart and cool. Uh, he's a member of one of our mastermind groups and we got to hang out with him recently and it was just a it was just a delight and a blessing. Just go be friends with Jason. Yeah. So thank you guys for joining us. Yes. Uh, just a little uh, give you guys a place where you can find some more resources. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for something to help you train your volunteers all year long, we created something called Grow Curriculum. You can find it at growcurriculum.org. And on there, we've got basically a training strategy mm -hmm. for the entire year. Yes. And so uh, that will be helpful if you're looking for that. 
Um, if you have any questions, feel free, message me, shoot me an email. And uh, we've super enjoyed hanging out with you guys today. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be doing this again right. and uh, it'll work the first time where we can bring <laughs> people on. But thank you for everyone who joined as a guest today. Ton of fun. Yes, and, and uh, as we continue experimenting with this, guys, give us your feedback about like days and times that work really well for you for these live videos. Uh, Cause we just wanna, you know, we're experimenting, trying to find the best spot uh, in the calendar to do it. So let us know what works and yeah. There you that's go. About it. All right. Have a great day. You guys are killing it. I know your, your falls are kicking off amazing. Yes. We've already seen so many people in the group share what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for making the group and stuff you can use. Amazing. You're amazing. We'll yes. see you next time. Bye friends. Peace.